Hello and welcome to this demo of Recover.5.1 integration with Extreme IO. So what we see here is an Extreme IO array running the X2 code, but for the purpose of real life, this will work just as good with the Extreme IO X1, just a new web UI. I have two Xbrix of this, Xbrix DRM1632 and Xbrix DRM1633. What I've configured on Xbrick uh, DRM1632 is uh, the source array, so let's see it's a uh, volume configuration. And we can see that I have two volumes here, source PRPA repo, this is the repository volumes that RecoverPoint is currently connected to. And this is the data store that I'm planning to replicate. If I go to the destination array, I will see that I only have the RecoverPoint repository volume here. I do not have any target volume that I pre-created, and in fact this is the purpose of the demo show you what's the new capabilities of RP 5.1. So with that, let's go to the recover point interface. Here you can see I have uh, two clusters, the source RPAs and the target RPAs. And if I indeed go to the protection tab, I can see that I have now have the option to protect volume. So let's click that. Recover point will now ask me which volume to protect. So far I only have one source volume that is attached to the recover point array. So that's the only one that listed here. So let's select this one. Let's give this uh, consistency group a name and a production name. And here I'm just confirming that this is a source PRPA that I'm uh, replicating from. I've already connected uh, the source RPAs to the target RPA, so that's already done. So now let's go ahead and define the production journal. This is where RecoverPoint is storing all the temporary metadata changes that allows me to go back to any point in time. And if you recall, I haven't configured any journal volume, and that is one of the features of the new versions of RecoverPoint. It will actually go ahead and automatically provision the journal for me. I can, of course, go back and select the journal volume that I pre-created, but what's the point? That's exactly one of the highlights of the version, that I don't need to do any of those things manually. So let's ask RecoverPoint to automatically provision the journal for me. So that is done. Now RecoverPoint will ask me where do I want to replicate this data to. Remember, RecoverPoint can offer both local protection and remote replication. For the purpose of local replication, there's no need to use RecoverPoint because it's just going to leverage our snapshots anyhow, anyhow. But for the purpose of remote replication, especially if you're using older extreme IO arrays that do not support native replication, you're going to have to use RecoverPoint. So that's what we're going to do here. Select the target RecoverPoint cluster that is connected to the target extreme IO XBRIX DRM1633 array. Let's give the copy a name and let's tell RecoverPoint to automatically provision those copy volumes for me. So it's already listed the array here. And here I can select the RPO. RecoverPoint select anything from 15 seconds RPO to hours or, or even data. You can refer to RPO in duration of data instead of uh, time. I just leave the default with 90 seconds and choose the periodic replication. So let's press next here. Okay, so the next step is to ask RecoverPoint to create me the remote journal volume and just like before, I can select a pre-existing one or let it do the, the journal provisioning for me, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. So let's just press the display group summary and here we can see all the settings that we've selected. I can of course go back and ch change each one of those settings, which is, I, I call it just the advanced button or the easy button configuration. For the purpose of the demo, let's assume that we are happy with this configuration and ask RecoverPoint to start replicate the data for me. The last thing that I want to show you is that one of the new features of this version is also to expose this remote volume for a specific initiator group. Remember, there was no pre-target volume that I created, so obviously there is no mapping that is done to the E6 host in my example in the DR site. So what I'm going to do is ask RecoverPoint to expose this new created volume that it, it will create for me to a specific initiator group. So let's do that as well. And in my case, I only have one E6 server at the DR site known as DRM pod 1 E645. So that's the E6 server I want RecoverPoint to replicate the volume to and create the mapping between this specific E6 initiator group to that target volume. So I just selected that. Let's press OK. And now we can actually finish and start with the replication itself. Okay, so if you go to the recover point interface, we can see it's starting with the replication itself. If we go to the source extreme ARA, we can already see that it automatically added all of those volumes for me. Remember, we only had these two when I started replication. So these are the volume that it's actually going to use when it's replicating data. 
and the application is almost done. And if we take a look at the remote extreme IRA, we can see again that apart from this volume, which was the only volume that I created, Recover Point went ahead and configured the remote volume for me. It actually created it for me. It created the journal volume for me. So all of those things are done automatically now with Recover Point 5.1. The name of the volume is exactly the same name as the source volume, so we'll, we'll now be able to tell that this is actually a replica of the source volume, and it will have its own suffix, which you can see here. And if I will actually go ahead to one of these volumes that is being replicated and press the mapping button, I will indeed see that Recover Point went actually go ahead and map that specific volume to the initiator group that I ask it to. So all of these things are now done automatically for. The last thing that I want to show from the Recover Point interface is the vCenter integration. So on the source PRPAs tab under RPA cluster, I've already configured Recover Point to attach to VM or vCenter. And if I expand this, I can actually see if my VMs are protected or not or partially. So in my case, the data store that I'm rep is this one, source PRPA VMFS so on. And if I indeed double click it and go to the VMs tab, I will see that I have PVZM01 up until PVM03, and those are the VMs that I'm actually replicating. And indeed, if I call it this information with the vCenter integration using the Recover Point UI, I can actually see that those VMs are fully protected. So fully green means that the VM is fully protected with all of its data drive, the disk drives if you would like. Red means that none of these VMs are protected. And partially green and partially red, which we don't see here, mean that some of the data drives of the VM are being replicated and some of them are not. So this is the integration from the Recover Point UI itself. Okay, so if you recall, I've already protected those three VMs. They all reside on this specific data store. And I'm going to show you the special integration that we have with VM of Site Recovery Manager. If you go to the global inventory list, you can see that I've deployed the EMC VSI plugin. The VSI plugin allows you to do many, many things, including storage provisioning, setting ES6IOs, best practices using Extreme IO and other EMC, Dell EMC storage array, space reclamation, volume extension, all of those done for free. But in the context of VMware SRM, it does something special. It knows to integrate into different data protection products, which includes VMware Site Recovery Manager, Dell EMC Recover Point, and Dell EMC AppSync. In the context of VMware SRM, Recover Point, it allows you to fail over to a specific point in time. Now, why is that important? Well, think about the value of Recover Point. It allows you to really fail over to any point in time based on your specific point in time schedule that you set up. And as you can see here, you can see all the point in time that I've selected for these specific volumes. Now, let's assume that you have a virus infection like one of these recent WannaCry or one of its variation uh, spyware mal malware viruses. VMware Site Recovery Manager, if you're using a ray based replication, no matter what the underlying storage technology is, will only allow you to fail over to the last point in time. Now, let's assume that you do have a virus infection or a logical data corruption. It's not going to help you to fail over to the last point in time because you're going to fail over to the last point in time with the virus infecting your VMs. So you really want to be able to specif specifically set a given point in time. And unfortunately, as I said, VMware SRM doesn't allow you to do it. And how do you overcome this issue? Well, using the VSI plugin. So let's go back to Recover Point. I just want to show you something. What I'm going to do now is create a manual bookmark. It's just going to have my name as opposed to the generic name that Recover Point does. I'm just going to call it Itzy Quan. It's going to be crash consistent. Recover Point also have the ability to do application consistent type of snapshot if you install its agent called KVS Cities. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to use a crash consistent uh, snapshot. So the snapshot itself will be super quick. There's not a lot of changes that happened. And as you can see, it's now done. And if I go back to the journal, I will at least be able to see that I do have now a manual bookmark called Itzik01, which is this one. And if I go back to the VSI plugin, just going to stand on one of these VMs that it's part of the consistency group that it's been replicated, and I press the refresh button here, you can indeed see that I also see this point in time here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trick VMware Site Recovery Manager to actually use this specific point in time as opposed to any one of the other ones. And of course, if I'm going to wait a little bit, you're going to see that this it's 01 is not the last point in time. But for the sake of the example, just imagine that it's not the last one. 
So what you're going to do in order to use a specific point in time is super easy. And again, it doesn't matter which one you select. You're just going to stand on the one that you want VMware Site Recovery Manager to use and you're going to press the Apply button. That's pretty much it. You're just going to press the OK button and it will tell you that setup is succe succeeded. And now what you're going to do is actually going to go back to VMware Site Recovery Manager. And I've already set up VMware Site Recovery Manager for this demo. I'm just going to go to the Recovery Plan and initiate the VMware Site Recovery Manager failover. And that's it. I can now run the failover itself, or of course any test failover, and it will actually go ahead and use the specific point in time that I've selected. So here I'm just going to press Approve, press the Finish button, and the failover scenario will now start. Here you can see my recovery site. So far the failover hasn't occurred yet, so you just see the placeholder VMs. And a couple of minutes, the failover will actually occur. The cover point will initiate a failover operation. These VMs will actually be booted up, and the VMs at the source site will be shutting themselves down. That's, of course, assuming that the source site still exists. There you go. I can now see that the ES6 server, the recovery site, already see the volume, the replica volume that was at the read-only mode. Now it's been exposed as read and writes to the VM, to the ES6 server. These VMs are now not just placeholders, and there you go. You can now see all the VMs being powered up. Of course you can also view the same information from recovery point. You can see that now I'm basically just running the distributed mode from the recovery site and that will be the situation until I will initiate a reprotection operation which will really start to replicate the data back from the recovery site to the source site. So that's it. Really an amazing integration between Dell EMC Extreme IO, Dell EMC Recover Point, Dell EMC VSI, and VMware Site Recovery Manager, all to really provide you a complete unified solution that will satisfy your a, automated needs to replicate data and the ability to, se to select a specific point in time when you initiate a failover operation using VMware Site Recovery Manager. Thank you very much for watching.